911, what's your emergency? On the 17th of November 2005, an apartment building located in Japan's Osaka prefecture was set on fire. The fire department was quickly alerted and was able to extinguish the fire. Once they were inside the building, however, they discovered that the fire wasn't the only cause for concern. Inside the apartment were the burnt remains of two sisters who had been brutally murdered. It seemed that the fire had been intentionally started to cover up this crime, but to understand how and why these events transpired, we must first go back 10 years to 1995. Yukio Yamaji is just 12 at the time, living with his mother and father in Yamaguchi. Looking into Yukio's upbringing, I'm sure most people would agree it wasn't easy. The family had many financial troubles and the father was an alcoholic. And according to some sources, Yukio's father was physically abusive to Yukio's mother. Given Japan's tradition of thin walls and the family's financial troubles, it isn't hard to imagine Yukio witnessing this. Later that year, however, Yukio's father's drinking habits would catch up to him and he would die due to complications with his liver. Some may see this as a good thing, but for the Yamaji family's financial situation, it only made matters worse. With his single mother now left to provide and raise him alone, things would only become tougher. It isn't hard to imagine how this would affect the young mind of Yukio Yamaji, and we can see how it affected him reflected in his behavior at school. He was often alone, not interacting with other students and would occasionally have violent outbursts. To illustrate further how difficult his childhood was during these early years, I want to read a quote from him. When I was in elementary school, I couldn't pay for home economic teaching materials. And for that reason, my teacher decided that I wasn't eligible to eat the food I had cooked during my cooking training. And I was forced to throw the food in the trash can. Because of events like this, Yukio would gradually stop going to school until dropping out completely once he graduated junior high school. After graduating, he seemed to be aware of his mother's debts, so he decided he needed to get a job to help provide for the household, and he would find work delivering newspapers around the local area. At some point during this time, he'd meet an older woman that he fell in love with, but because of the big age gap, the woman would later call off their relationship. Around this time, Yukio's mother would learn about their relationship, and it seems she was distasteful of it because she would confront the woman over the phone. However, what she wasn't aware of was that Yukio had witnessed the whole thing, and after finding his mother interfering with his love life, he became enraged. July 29th, 2000. Age 16, Yukio Yamaji, armed with a metal baseball bat, would brutally beat his 50-year-old mother to death in their apartment building in Yamaguchi. This was a prolonged attack. It's not known how many times he hit her, but from the autopsy report of broken bones and disfiguration, it's clear that this was a vicious and brutal killing. It's unclear if he ever had a plan on what he was going to do after, but on the 31st of July, just two days later, he would call the police and turn himself in. When questioned, he told investigators his motives for murder were his mother's increasing debt and her interference in his love life. Astonishingly, when the judge saw the case, he decided three years in a juvenile detention center would be enough for this murder. Sources seem to point to the reasoning behind such a lenient sentence was that the judge felt pity for Yukio given his harsh upbringing and believed he could be reformed. After his sentencing, the timeline is rather uneventful. Yukio spent his time gathering qualifications while in the detention center, but other than that, not much else is known or worth mentioning. After Yukio's parole in October 2003, and later release in March 2004, now, without his parents and all alone, he spent a short time with his grandmother while looking for the woman he'd fallen in love with before the murder. It seemed he believed she was waiting for him, as he would tell staff at the detention center, quote, there is a woman waiting for me once I leave here. It's unclear whether she knew that he was looking for her, but probably for her sake, it's lucky that he didn't find her. Unable to find her, he'd move to another city and begin working at a pachinko parlor while routinely returning to Yamaguchi on work holidays in hopes of finding her. It was while working at this pachinko parlor that Yukio would make some new friends who he'd spend a short time traveling Japan with. One of these travels would take them to a hostess club Yukio seemed to struggle with social interactions, but at the hostess club, things were worse. 
One of the men who went with him at the time mentioned how Yukio couldn't even talk to the women. Quote, I didn't really enjoy going out with him, even at the hostess clubs. He was too shy to talk to the women. Feeling like an outcast, Yukio would uproot his life again and move to Osaka, leaving these friends behind. Twenty-seven-year-old Asuka Uehara and her nineteen-year-old sister Chihiro were a pair of sisters that lived in an apartment complex situated in the Naniwa ward of Osaka. Unbeknownst to them, on the 11th of November 2005, Yukio had recently moved into the same apartment complex as them, and even though the two sisters were unaware of his existence, he had become infatuated with the two. Once Yukio had set his sight on the sisters, he would follow them in aims of discovering which apartment they lived in. After he'd figured that out, he would set his twisted plan in motion. On the 16th of November, he broke into the sisters' apartment while they were both out and waited. The next day, Asuka was returning home from work when Yukio ambushed her in the apartment. Armed with a butcher's knife, he would rape her at knife point, cutting into her face and chest before ultimately killing her. Not long after, Chihiro would return home, where Yukio would repeat his attack all over again. After these brutal killings were done, he'd smoke a cigarette on the sister's balcony and steal 5,000 yen before setting the apartment on fire and fleeing to a nearby shrine where he'd bury the murder weapon. As previously mentioned, the sisters' bodies would be discovered after the firefighters extinguished the blaze. Following this, police's suspicion would soon fall to Yukio once they discovered he lived in the same apartment complex and on the 5th of December, he was brought in for questioning, where he'd confessed to raping and killing the two sisters, along with starting the fire. Yukio did seem willing to communicate with the police and prosecutors about the rape and murder and his motives behind them, saying, quote, The reason I killed them was because I had a lot of fun and I couldn't forget when I killed my mother a long time ago, so I decided to kill again and killed them. The target could have been anyone, not just these two. And quote. When I pulled the knife out of one sister's chest, I saw her leaning back and my excitement became extreme, and I got a complete erection. I cut her hand with a knife to increase my sexual arousal. I stabbed her right breast with a knife. It was clear to the prosecutors, as I'm sure it is to you, that Yukio had no remorse for these crimes, and was just living out his own sick, twisted fantasy at the cost of these two innocent lives. With the mountain of evidence against him, it wasn't hard for the court to find him guilty. Yukio's defense team tried to argue that he didn't know the difference between right and wrong, as he suffered from Asperger's syndrome. However, the judge sided with the prosecutors who insisted that Yukio was mentally capable of the distinction. And on the 13th of December 2006, the judge sentenced Yukio to death. It would take some time till the sentencing was carried out. But after Yukio's appeal was retracted on May 31st, 2007, he would ultimately be executed by hanging on the 28th of July, 2009.